Since you have been there to, some, to see me go through my pains, to see me go through my rejoicing, many of you have seen me when I was sorrowful. Sorrowful probably because of the difficulty one of you was facing. Sorrowful probably because of my personal issues. Many of you here have seen me in my downcast state. And many of you have seen me when I was most excited. Because you were there for me, and because you have known me, even in my low moments and in my high moments, the Bible is letting us understand here that you therefore will certainly partake or you will be partakers of the same grace that God is giving you. I grew up as a young Christian. I didn't have anybody who monitored me. Nobody ever monitored me. Even until now that I'm old, I even call people my spiritual parents. People don't monitor me. I don't know why. One of my spiritual fathers told me, what I expect of you is, if you have a difficulty, you can come up to me and tell me if you have. But, uh, you know, it's not like I will be calling you from time to time to be talking to you and things like that. From young, the Lord has given me grace to be able to abide in Him. And the Bible is teaching us here that because of this relationship that we have had together, the same grace that the Lord has granted to me, it's the same grace is granted to every one of us that are sitting here. So we have to be confident that he who started this good work in our lives is faithful to complete it to the very end. More so because he makes us partakers of the same, same, same grace. He makes us partakers of the same grace. He will stand. He's late. There's no space. He makes us partakers of the same grace. Verse 8 says, For God is my record. How greatly I long after you in my bowels of Jesus Christ. In the bowels of Jesus Christ. God is my witness. I wish I was able to open up my heart to let you know how much I love you. How much I wish I were able to stay with you. I wish I was able to let you know this. That it is difficult. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet much more, more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment. My prayer for you, just like Apostle Paul was able to pray for his people, is that the love will help you, that your love for God will rather grow more and more. And many people, the Bible even tells us a story of a situation where somebody was helping other people to follow a particular religion or something. And then when the leader was caught and the leader was killed, the people scattered away and they abandoned the religion they were following. So he was advising that if we have caught Jesus and we have killed him and the disciples have not abandoned that, that they, they, are, they are following Jesus, then certainly it is it's something from God. So let's Let's leave them alone. What I'm saying here is that actually there are many people who have decided to, have, to turn their backs on God because their spiritual parents probably sooner or later left them. So staying alone, they left or they returned back to sin. But the prayer that I am making for you is that the Lord will give you grace the Lord will increase your love for him more and more. Mm-hmm. Because you did not come to believe in me. Because you did not love God because of me. You were not following God because of us, my wife and I. You loved God because of who he is. And we have only been vessels to help to teach you, to instruct you, to help you to know how to love God more. So your hunger for God will increase instead. Your thirst for God should increase instead. Your craving for God should increase. And as you do that, the Bible teaches us 
that he who began this good work in our lives is faithful to complete it. What does it mean to complete? It means to perfect it, to make it to reach maximum. He's faithful to make us attain maximum experience in the good thing that God wants to bring our way. I love you very seriously and I wish I was able to stay. But I can't stay, I have to go. You don't have to operate like an I servant, probably who was loving Jesus because somebody was forcing him to do so. But you have to remember that I love Jesus because he gave himself for me. And I'm following him because I love him and because I want to escape hellfire. So I must keep on loving him. Even when I'm in temptation, even when I'm in persecution, I have only one choice. And that choice is for me to continue to love God. Amen. Amen. Prove things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. This is the prayer I have for you, that God will help you to be able to approve the things that are excellent. God will help you to be able to do the things that are good. God will help you to be able to follow the things that are right. You will follow excellence. You will not turn back like the dog to their vomit. You will not turn back to the sin that you have abandoned. But in faithfulness, you will stick clean to God. That you will be able to approve. Identify among your age mates what you know is wrong and stay away from. Identify from among your church friends what you know the practice is wrong and stay away from such people. Identify from among every class of people that you will have the opportunity to interact with the wrong things they do and keep away from such people. The Bible tells us that it is important for us to know according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 53 that bad company will spread good character. We have the responsibility to identify what is wrong and to escape it. That you may be able to approve what is excellent and do such things. That you should also be sincere and without offense. Sincere means what? It means serving the Lord in faithfulness. Not being an eye server, not doing it because somebody is pressuring you. But that you sincerely you have a love for God. Have a love for God. Not because somebody is chasing you behind and forcing you to do so. But because you are learning to live a life free from offense when Jesus will come to earth. The Bible teaches us that God is going to judge people according to the works they have made. And God is requiring that we should live lives that are free from offense. Live lives that are free from spot, from wrinkles, from sin, until the day Jesus will come back to earth. Say, but I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the followers of the gospel. Well, following the words of Paul, I just have to tell to know here now. What God is allowing to happen today is happening so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be extended to other people. As the church has prayed, they are giving me their prayers, their support, that the Lord will use me as a missionary to some other land. The Lord will use me as a source of influence to other lives out here. So what God is allowing to happen today is allowing it to happen so that the gospel can be further, the gospel can be carried ahead, the gospel can be extended to other people who do not know him yet. Other boys and girls, other men and women, other children. So for this reason we will not need to worry very much, we don't need to sorrow a lot because it comes a time God will be able to bring us back together. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. 
whether God gives us the opportunity to meet again, or He doesn't give us the opportunity to meet again. The telephones will ring, the internet will carry a message, and what I desire to hear from every one of us, what I desire to hear about every one of us, is that we are waxing strong in the Lord. Is that we are carrying the gospel and moving forward. Is that we are increasing in ministry. Is that we are following God with a lot of love. Say them, probably to defend yourself, probably, I mean, they do, are saying them as a means of transmitting the word of God, transmitting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even the conversations you seek to talk with your friends, it should be the time that when people hear it, they hear Christ in it. In every activity that you seek to do, in every activity that you involve yourself in, my prayer and my expectation is that it will be some means of carrying the word of God into an ear that is only God. Here. Salvation and that of God. And that I'm still talking about what I expect to hear and what I expect to see. Is that even when you go through difficult moments, when you go through testing moments, when you go through persecutions, when you go through temptations, when some of you, your parents, will have to throw you out of school because they want you to say no to Jesus. When some of you, your friends, will abandon you, give you names, make a mockery of you, label you, stigmatize you, simply because you are carrying the mark of Jesus Christ. The Bible is teaching us that when we go through such moments, we should not be terrified. We should not be worried. We should not regret being children of God. We should keep pressing on. We should keep pressing on. That they think that you are lost. They think that you are, you are foolish. They think that you have made an error. But to those of us who know where we are coming from and where we are going to, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's saving. It's it, it's a way of saving ourselves from condemnation, saving ourselves from some punishment that is coming ahead, which they cannot know that we do know. So what I am saying here this evening is that, by the grace of God, as we part company for a season, we should continue to hold strongly onto the Lord in whom we have believed, knowing that we didn't believe in a man. We believe in God. And God has simply put us together to be able to sharpen one another. So that even when my brother is not there, when my sister is not there, I can be sure I can lift up my eyes to God and He will still be a very present help in time of need for me. Verse, verse 29 says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Persecution moments at times God is at opportunities God is giving us to suffer for the sake of the gospel. And it is the Bible is teaching us here that it is one of the things God has also given to us. The opportunity to suffer persecution. It is not enough or it is not it is not all about the, the blessings that God has given us in in this parcel of, of salvation. He has also included in that same parcel the opportunity to suffer for the sake of the gospel. That's also included in that, in that person, the opportunity for us to suffer for the sake of righteousness. So that nobody has to move from his point of integrity because he's being persecuted. You are not going to solve any problem by trying to become unfaithful because of the pressure that is coming from people. You have a responsibility to stand firm and you will only be able to see the move of God, the hand of God, the power of God, when you choose to stand firm, even in the face of persecution. If you move, you won't see God at work. If you stand still, you will see God moving. Amen. Determination to follow God must be very hard. You must be the kind of person that people will say, despite all that everybody is speaking. Can't you change your mind? There are those moments that will come. You are the... Can't you change your mind about this thing? But the Bible is expecting that even in such moments, we must be stable in our decision to follow God. 
Amen. We must be stable in our decision to follow God. We must be stable. Amen. I'm going to take some few questions, some few comments, and then we're going to have some time to pray. Then we're going to go. It's nothing but just something to tell my father, like I call him. Everybody knows him as Uncle Moses, but I call him father. That though he may be living, I am glad at least that it is not death that is part of us. And I hope that someday, by the grace of God, we are going to meet again. I just want to let you know that. I gave my life to Christ in 2007 and because I lacked mentorship somehow and because of persecution that was so severe, especially from the part of my family members, I couldn't continue. But when I finally made up my mind last October to follow Christ, it happened to fall in his hands. And I want to thank God that he made him a babysitter for me and he has actually been a babysitter. Each time he, I see him, the image of God comes to me of course. And sometimes I there are certain times that I'll say, well, let me stay for a while without seeing my promotes. And I can't help it on because my spirit like is like so engulfed in things in such a way that I cannot keep it. And I'll find myself wanting to see Uncle Moses or texting him or something. I'm not saying that I adore him or he has taken the place of God in my life for him. But that through him I see God. Amen. Amen. Through him I see God. And what I want to say to you, Father, is that as you go, in the Bible, <laughs> Elisha requested just the whole portion of the spirit of Elijah to be blessed of him. <laughs> I pray that <coughs> a triple portion of your spirit of hospitality, welcoming attitude, what have you to be poured upon me to go life for this period of time? You've said we should stand. I pray, especially on my part, that, that just as you've said, and just as your words always sink in me, they have actually sunk. And I pray that I am going to stand by the grace of God. Father, I don't know what else to say. If I were still a child, I would have been weeping, though I went to church because of some other people. <laughs> I want to say that we had a safe journey to America. Do just what you are going to do here. Maybe more, why not more? That your impact, your spiritual, your impact on people's spiritual life is going to be felt. It's going to be felt more there, maybe than what was what was seen here. And then, Father, I want to say I love you, but in particular, and on behalf of other people who cannot take stand here with me, I want to say we love you. I will miss you as you do. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, as the Lord has done it, we have been all this while, and God has made it that He should separate from us. It was not easy. My, I, at one time I left and went to Mbengu for high school because I failed the advanced level. I was only praying, I have to come back to the meet of most. Uh, when I came back, for, after I had the advanced level, I was told to go to the University of the only one. But how will I separate from Okumos, you know, it was difficult. I had it that, no, I have to come back to the so that I will be close to him. Uh, to him. Uh, <laughs> so, finally God made it. I came to Boya. Because he was doing, I did it too. So I was following him, my father, you know, <coughs> and um, I did the same program he did in the university. Father and daughter, I graduated, and, and, and he's leaving me now. Uh, one thing I'm happy is that Uncle Moses has really been caring. Though I abandoned him for some time, I was thinking of my own things. <laughs> <laughs> but then I 
Kathy is my father. I can never abandon him. I will never abandon him too. Uncle Mons will be leaving tomorrow. I don't know if I should cry. I cannot cry. I know he's going to somewhere. And God is taking him there for something greater. And God is going to keep him there. And he's going to do more and more great things like he has been doing to us. I love him so much. And the thing is, he does not smile when it comes to something of he tells you and the things. He does not And that's what I like. Because when you say, when you do like that, it causes the person to change. And when you do something good, he appreciates it. So that is one thing I really like about the advices and all these things. So I really learned a lot from him. I really learned a lot from him. And I want to say that as a group, I remain that person that we know who to be. That circumstances <coughs> will not change you. Mm -hmm. Because there is always a tendency that when people live here and go that way, they see the life that way is maybe different from the one here and they begin to say, oh, then where is God in this whole thing? Because I can have my daily bread, I can have this, I can have that. Without the stressing of and where now is God? So they tend to maybe forget about God. I want to say that I do hope and believe that it will not be like that. That you will remain strong as you go here. And that as you go, remain prayerful, remain strong. And I want to encourage you that when you are faithful with God, it will always be faithful with you. And when I passed to go to Form 2, I met with him. My first children's camp that I attended in Limbo, I met him. And ever since I knew him, he has been an example to me. And I want to say that I'm so glad and, and filled with joy that in a moment like this that he is leaving us, he is, I am present. Amen. That's why I just have a song. A short song. This song is not only for him, but it's also for all of us who are his children. I believe that all of us have been under him. So just listen to this song as you get it. Just keep to what the Lord, the Holy Spirit is telling you. Praise the Lord. I wanna use you to fulfill my plan. I wanna use you. To reach the world, I have called on you, don't complain. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna use you. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna use you. I have called on you. I counted on Adam, I counted on King, I counted on Jonah, but he was the same. I counted on Judah, but he proved not true. Now go tell the whole world that I'm counting on you. So, wanna, I wanna. I wanna, I wanna use you. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna use you. I have called on you, don't complain. It's my joy that he goes because he goes to be preached. I'm glad for it. The things are not separated, but it's for the of us all. Please come for me. Thank you. Je crois que depuis l'âge de 11 ans, j'ai fait plein de points, points, et je me rappelle la première fois qu'il est venu à la maison. La première fois qu'il est venu ici, on devait s'entendre quelque part. 
Mm-hmm. Il était venu quand mon père était malade, ils sont venus pour prier à la maison. Et ce, ce geste-là, <coughs> il ne connaissait même pas mon père. Mais la seule personne qui connaissait dans ma famille, c'était ma grande soeur. Ils sont venus, ils ont prié. Et puis c'était tout. Mais je me rappelle, la fois que j'ai donné ma vie à Christ, c'était en 2020-2020. Et c'est au moment où il s'est occupé. Il s'est occupé de moi comme s'il me connaissait. Donc, il a eu, il s'est occupé de moi, c'est lui qui m'a donné ma première Bible, c'est la présence, c'est la Bible que j'utilise. Et quand mon père est mort, avant qu'il meure, il pouvait dire que je n'avais jamais eu expérimenté de manque dans ma vie. Mais quand mon père est mort, j'ai vu avec les problèmes de famille qui sont posés et les problèmes par ci et ma mère qui était aussi malade. Mon poumon était là. Il m'a assisté financièrement, spirituellement. Il a toujours été là. Donc moi, je le considère comme personne de la famille. À cause de l'amour qu'il a pu démontrer envers moi, à cause de toutes les choses qu'il a eu à dans ma, à faire dans ma vie. Donc je l'ai utilisé pour ma terre. Et bien, moi, que personne ne peut me comprendre. I don't have much to say because the way they are virtually said everything, but I want to encourage on to know that as he leaves us, <coughs> we should do more better things than what he did here. And you should not go there and let uh, uh, other things preoccupy your mind. Take God first and as you have taken you first and you have taken you up, you can continue lifting you up. Now I want to encourage all of us to also put God in our lives first and to also lift us up. I've known you for just a short period of time, but I knew him my last year in the university. <laughs> but it has been, it is as if I knew you for a very long time. So I thank God for it. I want to talk, but I have to talk. <laughs> I mean, my hands are up. <laughs> well, it's a thing of joy, and at the same time of, uh, how can I put it, sadness at uh, Uncle Moses, Uncle leaving me in particular. I don't know about any other person, <laughs> but I, 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 am, I want, I'm talking about how I feel and what I think about myself. You know, you can never know the people that you have until the time you are down. You can never know the actual people you have until when you are down. And in my life, I experienced a moment when I was like up there and all of a sudden I found myself down to earth creeping on the ground even like a small bone child and uh, Uncle Moses is one of those pillars that took me up and became a kind of uh, a children's bicycle that taught me how to walk again and I am standing here as a giant now that can kill many so I want to thank God for him. There is one thing I want to challenge myself with and challenge all of us here. We all have said good things and if, if all of us are given an opportunity to talk, we will keep on talking about the good things and all how he has blessed us, how he has been of encouragement and good to us. But there is one thing I want to say here. Uncle Mose is going. He has been like a pillar to us. And I think we should challenge ourselves with this encouragement that we too will learn from him and become like a pillar to others or to another at least. That is, the same thing we have learned from him as he has sacrificed to us, we should not expect that maybe another father should come again and continue sacrificing. But we should challenge ourselves to becoming fathers, to becoming daughters, to becoming, sorry, mothers and fathers that will raise up other people that will also speak on our own a falling bush ceremony as we are doing on Uncle Moses' day like this. Amen. Amen. That's the little I have to say. Thank you.
lift up your voice and honor the Lord for what putting us together he has been able to achieve in your life through your life in my life through my life just honor him and as you worship him you will mix it together with some praying for me some declarations on my behalf you're just going to pray in the name of Jesus just reverence you
fit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us today. His presence is overshadowing our hearts. The Lord is at work. He's giving a new touch. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Lift up your heart to God. Lift up your heart to God. The Lord is beginning a new work. Close your eyes and trust the Lord for something special now. The Lord is at work. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I and the children you have given me, we are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders. I and the kids you have given me, we are for signs and wonders. There is no single one of them that will miss out on this anointing for miracles, on this anointing for signs and wonders. No one shall miss it out. No one is missing it out. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I break the heavens loose and I release upon the throne of God an anointing to fall upon this place to touch everyone that is standing here. Oh God, everyone that is trusting, everyone that is looking up to you, everyone that is hoping, everyone with an open heart before you. Let there be a touch reaching out now. Let there be a touch reaching out now. Let there be a touch reaching out now. Another touch. Another touch. Another touch. Another touch. Another touch. That power of the Holy Ghost. You told Mary. You said the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Most High. Let there be an implantation. Oh God, the seed of the Most High. Now. 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 Yes. Every arrest that has been upon any of my kids, yes. thou unshown from heaven, yes. 
Break those chins now. Yes, yes. Break those chins now. Yes. Break those chins now. Yes. Break those chins now. Yes. I speak liberty. In the authority of God upon my life. I speak liberty upon my kids. Liberty. Freedom. Yes. Freedom. Yes. No. No. The mighty presence of God. Flow now. 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 Yes. 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 Let it be a descent of your glory upon this life in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of darkness, every force of limitation, every force of delay, every force of retardation, every manifestation from the pit of hell that has held her back from fulfilling her purpose, from achieving the most. I break you loose now. 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 I tear off your face. I take back from the pit of hell. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Kapo da ba ba ba. Kapo da ba ba ba. Kapo da ba ba ba. This is the song in the name of Jesus. This is the song in the name of 
Jesus. You forces of darkness, the end has come. Your end has come. Jesus, your end has come. Jesus, your end has come. Jesus, yes, Lord. 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 Yes,